Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, welcome to CNBC. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, you have just been sentenced to 15 years in prison. So I'll start with the most simple question possible. How are you feeling at the moment? Uh, you know, I feel OK because uh, at least, you know, I'm in uh, Europe uh, in free, uh, I in, in safety, safeness, I suppose. But honestly speaking, I wasn't surprised by the court verdict. It was predictable that uh, Lukashenko would try to uh, take revenge on me. But, you know, he was wrong when he thought that it would the sentence would stop me or our movement. We uh, will continue to do what we do because our comrades, our beloved, uh, our friends are uh, behind the bars in reality. Uh, they are at the moment it's about uh, 1,500 political prisoners uh, and the actual number is uh, much so we have to continue our fight to release all of them. And you do believe that this was an act of revenge from the Lukashenko regime? Of course, it's uh, the revenge because, uh, you know, Lukashenko sees that, uh, uh, you know, he made me to flee Belarus. He, he was sure that nothing can be done from exile, but he underestimated the will of people for changes. And uh, he is trying to uh, create, you know, difficulties for uh, people abroad and on the ground just to stop our movement. But our movement is unstoppable. And walk me through the details of this so-called trial. As I understand it, your court-appointed lawyer had zero contact with you throughout the entire process. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. When I uh, got known from the internet that uh, the trial against me started, uh, I tried to contact to the lawyer uh, that was designated by the regime, but he refused to communicate. And I just wonder how this person uh, was uh, defending me in the court because he doesn't know my position. He doesn't know my thought about this trial. Uh, but it's uh, it shows that uh, there is no law in our country and they um, uh, sentenced me to so many years as they wanted. And you mentioned that you are in Europe now, but do you fear for your own safety and the security of your family or do you fear for your life? You know, I try not to think about this. Uh, of course, I'm much safer in uh, Europe than people in Belarus. Uh, but of course, I realize how long the regime's hands are. We can uh, recall the hijacking of uh, aircraft, for example. So, but uh, I think that uh, we have to take care most of those who are still in Belarus and make our communication safe for them, first of all. It's very clear that Lukashenko's regime has no issue sending his political opponents to jail. So what is your message to the people of Belarus now? Uh, maybe in this period of time, I would wish Belarusians to be safe inside Belarus because I know that people didn't give up to resist. We see uh, small acts of disobedience every day in our country, but we have to understand that uh, Lukashenko is threatening people and uh, we have to keep people active, to, he to keep people energized, uh, to keep people in freedom. So I ask them not to believe propaganda, not to believe state TV, to look for information uh, in uh, alternative sources of media and uh, continue resisting, but safely. And walk me through what you are going to do now. What does this mean for your future and your political future in particular? Uh, so nothing is changing actually for me. I'm continuing to resist together with the uh, all Belarusians. I can do uh, more uh, more things, you know, uh, in on the international arena. So that's why my task is to attract uh, more attention to the issue of uh, Belarusian internal crisis, to um, uh, Lukashenko as war criminal, to persuade our uh, political allies to create more uh, points of pressure on Lukashenko's regime, to impose more sanctions on uh, state enterprises, you know, to isolate him politically and economically, but on the other hand, to support civil society who are continuing to resist and uh, to persuade our partners to bring Lukashenko to accountability, because now it looks like um, uh, Lukashenko is considered to be half 
guilty in war crimes. His crimes against humanity inside Belarus is not uh, mentioned at all at the moment. But uh, these are very important issues for uh, Belarusians. And uh, that's why, uh, you know, also uh, my task is to communicate with people on the ground, not to be lost in our like uh, bubble of exiled people. Uh, we uh, continue to communicate with the Belarusians um, uh, in Belarus, you know, to listen to the problems, uh, what they want us to do, how do they feel. So we have to uh, keep our movement alive because, you know, Lukashenko's regime tries to uh, create many uh, difficulties for uh, us to quarrel us. Uh, but we have to say that the uh, democratic movement is united as never before. And do you stand by the belief that you won the election? Of course, we have proofs uh, to this, and uh, you know the support of people shows this clearly. Uh, and uh, I, I, every day I come, I am communicating with um, people abroad, uh, with our uh, diaspora, with exiled people, with people in Belarus, and I see that this support is not decreasing. Instead, uh, support for Lukashenko uh, is decreasing at all. You know, because after he uh, dragged our country into the war, uh, you know. Belarusians saw that he is ready to uh, sell our independence, to uh, send our, I don't know, Belarusian troops to the war only to save his uh, position. He wants to show that he's controlling uh, Belarus, he's controlling people, and um, uh, you know, Belarusians don't want to trade with our independence. So I feel this support every day, and this is what um, uh, gives me uh, the strength to continue this fight. The fate of Ukraine and the fate of Belarus are ultimately intertwined. Is the West doing enough to help the people of Belarus living under what's being called Europe's last dictatorship? Of course, I see that now the focus of uh, uh, countries are uh, on Ukraine and we fully support this because we understand that Ukrainians now are fighting not only for their land, uh, they are fighting for uh, democratic values that uh, are uh, the core of uh, democracy. And uh, but maybe there is uh, less understanding how the fates of Belarus and the Ukraine are intertwined. We are trying to explain our political partners that until Belarus is free, there will be constant threat to Ukraine, to our uh, neighbors, and you know, you know, to the security of the whole region. And that's why Belarusian questions should be um, uh, solved in complex with the uh, Ukrainian question. You can't leave Belarus for one day later, you know, to say we will think about you uh, after the war in Ukraine is over. Uh, Belarus is part of this crisis, and this crisis should be solved in complex. So what's your message to the West and to European leaders? What can they do in this situation to support Belarus and the situation that millions of people in Belarus now face under this regime? In Belarus now face under this regime. So first of all, I uh, want our political partners to keep consistency uh, towards Belarus, uh, like uh, continue to uh, create multiple points of pressure on the regime, isolate regime politically, economically. On the other hand, support civil society. We need energy, we need strength to continue our fight. But now, for example, uh, assistance maybe is enough to sustain, but it's not enough uh, to win. Uh, so close all the loopholes of the sanctions because uh, through these loopholes Lukashenko can easily trade with uh, Western countries through uh, Kazakhstan, you know, Russia. Uh, also, we are asking our partners to bring Lukashenko and his cronies to accountability because now Lukashenko feels unpunished. He feels this impunity and he can commit uh, crimes against Belarusians, you know, behind this uh, broader problem of uh, of Ukraine. Uh, also, uh, increased mobility of uh, Belarusians. Uh, we are grateful to our partners that uh, after the war has started, there was no visa ban for Belarus because we unexpectedly uh, turned from uh, heroes 
who are defending the uh, the democracy and to um, pariahs, you know, to uh, people who, from the country who st who collaborate in the war. And it took us a, a while to explain that regime in Belarus and people are two different things. Uh, also, I ask our partners to distinguish Belarus and Russia and not to put our countries into one um, basket. And how would you characterize the Putin-Lukashenko relationship today? Uh, you know, uh, it's not friendship for sure. Uh, maybe they have uh, a symbiotic relationship where one uh, needs uh, another. Uh, Putin needs Lukashenko as a uh, ally, as a cheap ally, actually, who fulfill all the orders of Putin, who provide territory infrastructure uh, to uh, attack uh, or Ukraine. Now, Lukashenko needs uh, Putin as political and economic uh, backup, uh, the source of his uh, power in Belarus, but he, you know, he became like a puppet in the hands of Putin and he doesn't, uh, uh, you know, control uh, a lot of spheres in Belarus anymore. They think, the only thing maybe he is controlling is uh, repressions uh, uh, against people. It's like, uh, you know, maybe you know this uh, story about Total and the Snake uh, who are, uh, who are uh, in, in the river. You know, they can't bite at the moment each other and uh, they have just to, uh, uh, how to say, you know, to be with each other because of uh, obstacles. Lukashenko has also just met with President Xi. US officials say China was aiding Moscow by rolling out the red carpet for him. How do you view China's role in this war? You know, first of all, uh, about this visit, it was very important for Lukashenko. It was his way to legitimize himself because no one admit him as uh, president after 2020. He for sure searched for investments, for money, but it will be difficult, you know, because China uh, will not invest in Belarus with all the uh, active political crisis and uh, active resistance. Um, like, uh, for example, recently partisans blew up uh, the plane in Belarus. Uh, but of course, uh, China is an important player in this uh, in geopolitical uh, issue in, in the world. But uh, usually they are waiting uh, who is uh, who is who will be the winner in this battle. And they just uh, stay a little bit aside, watching closely what's going on in the world. Of course, China says it has an interest in ending the conflict, but it has shown no signs of doing so. What will it take to bring an end to this conflict with Russia? You know, I think that uh, uh, Ukrainians have uh, a list of uh, demands uh, to Russia or, or uh, obstacles when the war can be over. And first of all, uh, the Russian troops have to be withdrawn from uh, Ukraine. And only after this, you know, a kind of negotiations uh, could take place. But also I have to mention here that uh, in Belarus, uh, there are about uh, 12,000 uh, Russian uh, military troops. And I think that, that the world have to demand withdrawal from uh, of Russian troops from Belarus as well. So, uh, I think that dictators cannot be appeased. Dictators cannot be re-educated. And now is this uh, uh, fight? It's not just fight between uh, Russia and Ukraine. It, it's fight between dictatorship and democracy. And uh, democracy should show its teeth uh, at last, and not to uh, make any deals uh, with dictators, but help those who are fighting democratic values. So in this case, to help Ukrainians and help Belarusians. And just finally, what is your message to Lukashenko? Uh, actually, I uh, want to say that, you know, his uh, political career is over. You know, he is trying you know, to uh, to keep this grip on power, but he knows that uh, Belarusian society has already changed. They don't want to see him as the leader. They know that since uh, 1994, there was no... Uh, uh, free and fair elections in Belarus. And uh, that's why he will never be uh, accepted by Belarusians anymore. Yes, now he's fighting with people. He has this uh, leverages uh, on Belarusians, you know, with the help of uh, tortures, uh, repressions, he can control, you know, the situation, but he will never uh, control uh, Belarusians' minds. 
uh, Bernstein's way of thinking and his time is over and he has to admit this. Um, but of course, uh, you know, people are sacrificing a lot to uh, fight for democratic changes in Belarus.